Hi and welcome to this episode of the Dynamics GP Blogster. Today I will be talking about how to manually replace the web client SSL certificates. My name is Mariano Gomez Bent. I'm a Microsoft MVP for the Business Solutions Platform. I'm also known as the Dynamics GP Blogster. You can find me at https dynamicsgpblogster.blogspot.com or on Twitter at dgpblogster. I usually use the hashtag MSDynGP and hashtag IamDynGP for anything Microsoft Dynamics GP related. So let's get started. Over here, I am currently running the web client. And in order to begin the process of replacing the certificates associated to this uh, site, you will want to have all your users exit Microsoft Dynamics GP on the web client. Your desktop client users can continue using the application as normal. That shouldn't affect the process of replacing the certificates. So right now I'm going to exit GP. And after exiting GP, the first thing you will want to do is stop your session central service and your session services. So for that, I'm just going to go to the services applet. And I will locate the GP session central service, stop that service, and the GP session services. Immediately after stopping these two services, you will want to get a couple of pieces of information that will allow you to complete this process in a more seamless and easy manner. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually go to my command prompt and please note that these command prompt options that you will be running have to be run in administrative mode because we will be replacing certificates, we will be binding ports, etc. Uh, it's going to be very important to have administrative privileges on the machine to complete these operations. So the first thing uh, you will want to do is you will want to see the current status of the existing certificate that you will, will be replacing as it relates to the uh, ports that are binded, that that certificate is binded to. So for that, I am going to run the netsh command and in this particular case, I'm going to make sure it's the HTTP command that, I, that I'm going to access. And I'm going to show the current status of the SSL certificates. Okay, But because you might have a number of SSL certificates binded to a number of ports, uh, you definitely would want to have a way to capture that information without having to scroll through this particular window. So I'm just going to send this to a file. I'm just going to call this file sslcert.txt. And uh, once it's created, I'm just going to edit it uh, to see what the content is currently. OK. So right now, I can see that these are all the IP ports and uh, that are currently binded to certificates on my machine. So here, for example, I have a 0 .0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 colon 28330. So that's a 8330 port that has a particular certificate hash bind to it. And I can see the application ID that uh, is bind to it. And I can also see the certificate store that is associated to that particular certificate. In particular, I'm interested on anything that's binded to 443. And this is this is my uh, HTTPS port, and uh, I know that the um, Microsoft Dynamics GP Web Client Runtime Services um, uses this particular port to communicate with with, um, with the browser and uh, expose the GP application via the browser. But also, if you look at this certificate hash, this certificate hash should be associated to other ports because we know that, for example, Session Central Service, which is by default port 48650, also uses the certificate if I've chosen to actually bind 
the communications uh, between the different GP services uh, that particular certificate. Furthermore, if I look, do another find, you'll see that port 48651, which uses the session services service, is also binded to the certificate. And um, that's how you know that these are the different applications. They all should have the same application ID, by the way, are sharing that particular certificate that, um, that is used by web client. Okay. So once you know that piece of information, the next step would be to basically delete those certificates from those ports. This is the reason why it's also important to capture a file because it's easier just to see what the, um, the calls that you need to do are and what the particular ports are that you're gonna be working on. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually run a NetSH HTTP delete SSL cert and the first port I'm going to unbind is the 443 port so that's basically the port that I'm going to use to remove the HTTPS binding so once we have that in place we should be successful here the other port that I'm going to unbind is the 48.50, which is the default port for the uh, session central service. So again, we just have to enter the net sh command, delete SSL cert, IP port 0 .0 .0, uh, colon 48650. And we will also do the same for the 48651 port. Okay, good. So all these three ports have been unbinded from the certificate, but uh, this is not where it ends. We also need to go back to IIS, and if you actually look at the at the website itself, the hosts are Dynamics GP um, web application. We will have to edit these bindings and remove this particular uh, 443 binding from that site. Okay, great. So now we have unbinded the site. If we actually try to go back to GP, we shouldn't be able to access the system because A, our services are down, but not only that, currently we wouldn't have access to those particular uh, ports that are, uh, or the particular certificate that binds those connections uh, and those ports. So that should, in essence, uh, prevent us from accessing the web client. Anyways, uh, getting back to the process of uh, binding a new certificate, as you can tell now, I'm just going to go back and edit the bindings and add a new certificate that um, I have created or have loaded to my machine. First, I had this Dynamics GP web client. I'm going to replace it for this Microsoft Dynamics GP web client certificate. And the important part here is to view what the current um, thumbprint is on that certificate. So this is going to be key because this is the new, cert the new certificate hash that we are going to have to associate to the ports that we have um, currently. So we can just um, copy this and paste it out over here somewhere. It can be the same file. You can choose to add it to a new file. And um, I'm just going to write it uh, just for my own sake and to remind myself, I'm just going to write it down just beneath this old certificate port. So I'm just going to hit here, new certificate hash. And um, just basically paste this over here. Nothing fancy, just uh, something that will allow me to, to see what I'm doing. Okay, and to keep track of the new certificate hash. All right, so once we have the, the hash in place, the new certificate hash in place, we can go back to IIS, hit OK here, hit OK, and now I have a binding to that port, to that 443 port. So if I actually decide to run a NetSH HTTP show SSL cert, I should now see that port 443 
if I scroll up all the way up again, uh, 443 should have now the new certificate hash that corresponds to the um, newly created certificate hash. Uh, sorry, this is uh, port 443, so right here. And uh, that effectively corresponds to the certificate hash that I just copied from the thumbprint, okay, for that certificate from IIS. So that's the, that's the first thing you want to make sure that um, happens. And once you have this, the rebinding for port um, 48650, and 48651 corresponding to the uh, session central service and session services respectively uh, should be pretty straightforward from there on. One more thing, one more piece of information to keep in mind is the application ID. This will be critical because the application ID is, a, is an actual um, equivalent GUID that is assigned to that particular uh, certificate or that particular application pool and that is assigned randomly by IIS so we want to make sure that we keep track of this so I'm just going to click uh, hit enter here and copy that also out here so I want to make sure I keep track of my application ID for uh, rebinding purposes so I'm just going to type this over here and boom that's it now um, let's start the process of rebinding so I'm just going to hit CLS here to clear the screen and I'm going to type net sh http add that's the command ssl cert okay and first is the port so the ip port is 0, .0, .0, .0. and uh, my default port is 48650 Okay, so we have specified the port. Now we need to specify the certificate hash. So um, this is the cert hash, and that's going to be equal to, uh, we can copy paste it out. Just make sure there's no uh, phony characters or anything like that. So I'm just going to paste that here. And uh, finally, we need the um, application ID. So I'm going to add application ID equals and uh, here we're going to copy out the actual application ID for that certificate paste it out in here so if we everything goes right this should uh, create the first binding you should always look for uh, confirmation that the certificate was binding binded successfully was bound successfully to the port again uh, since I'm doing the same thing for port 485651 uh, I am just going to uh, go back, bring up the previous command, and hit uh, and replace the 650 for 651 and hit enter once more. So now I have all these ports binded to the new certificate. So the next thing is to finally bring up our services. So I'm going to start the GP session central uh, session services. And once I have this service started, I'm going to start up the Session Central service and we should be ready to test out the, uh, the web client once more and make sure it's all working again. Okay, so both services are up and, run are up and running. And then we're going to go and basically reload the site. And if everything goes fine, I should be able to log in all the way to Microsoft Dynamics GP without having to um, complete any other extra operations. So I'm just going to use the stored password that I have here. And uh, we're good to go. So if you are able to get that far, then ending was completely completed successfully. So at this point, uh, it's safe to say that all this worked. I didn't have to go and uninstall the web client to re and reinstall it. And uh, keep in mind that if you try to do this in a single machine instance or in a single machine configuration, you will most likely have to uninstall and reinstall the web client as the repair capabilities do not consider the um, certificate. You will have those certificates grayed out 
so you wouldn't be able to replace the certificate using the repair installation function. Um, if you are, if you did a custom install, uh, chances are it will, uh, you will be able to use the repair function from the custom install to replace the certificate. But that's something for you to try out and make sure it's um, it's functional and working as expected. So uh, this concludes my presentation for today. I hope you enjoyed the session, and as always, I am looking to hear. Fo I'm looking forward to hear from you. So thank you very much, and talk to you guys soon.